Hello, dear friends! We have all heard about the anti-tank missile system Javelin, about its effectiveness and deadliness. Today we will get acquainted with it in great detail. We will study its principle of operation, possibilities of its application in combat and also we will consider its pros and cons. The American-made FGM-148 Javelin is one of the world's best portable anti-tank missile systems. The Javelin consists of a launch container with a missile and a separate command launch unit. After the shot, the container is discarded. And then command launch unit is hooked to another container with a missile. And this unit has a night vision device and can be used to monitor the battlefield. The launch container with the missile costs $175,000 for the US Army. And the control unit costs $295,000. So the whole complex costs about $470,000. This was the price in 2020. And the new sighting systems cost twice as much. Prices of Javelin for other countries are of course higher. The cost of one complex with six missiles is $600,000 for the Allies and up to $1.4 million for export. However, the Javelin infrared seeker missile has previously performed well in Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria. The missile has one feature that allows it to hit literally every tank in the world. It strikes at the weak top of the armor. In addition, the Javelin has fewer mistakes in calculation than other anti-tank missile systems. With its low weight, the complex weighs 23 kilograms assembled, it can be used on the battlefield as a first response to a massive and sudden tank attack. This is the scenario the US military could face during Operation Desert Shield, when light infantry was engaged to defend Saudi Arabia. And it can also be used in the Baltics. The Javelin missiles are so effective that in many cases the fact of their supply becomes a political issue. The US has also decided that it will not only be an infantry system. Javelins will be installed on combat vehicles. So how is this anti-tank dart activated and why is it so powerful? The Javelin is not as graceful and deadly as its name might suggest. It looks like a weighty cudgel just over a meter in length. It is worth noting that you do not have to look good to hit a tank. The command launch unit of the system is a sophisticated infrared detection unit with different modes of operation, including optical mode with 4x magnification, thermal with green backlight and 4x magnification, and a 12x magnification mode that activates when the missile is pointed at the target. The missile's homing head even provides the fourth mode of operation, infrared with 9x magnification. Thus, the command launch unit is a handy scanning device for infantrymen. The command and launch thermal imager needs to be cooled for it to function well. And theoretically, the cooling process takes 30 seconds. There are also many fuses in this set to prevent accidental firing. The command launch unit together with the missile weighs 23 kilograms. By the way, it is the missile that weighs the most. It can be fired while crouching or even sitting down. This is much easier than firing a TOW missile or other long-range anti-tank systems, which most often require a heavy tripod. Nevertheless, you hardly want to run a marathon with such a cudgel on your shoulders. When the operator locates the target, captures it with the missile's infrared homing head and presses the release button, the Javelin missile is ejected from the command launch unit by the soft launch method without using the rocket motor, which reduces the recoil. The burst of flame produced when the missile is launched allows the enemy to track the shooter after firing and also creates a mortal danger in case the missile is launched from the enclosed space, say a building. Nevertheless, a reverse wave does occur and therefore standing in its path is not recommended. After firing, the operator of the Javelin actually can play Snake on his cell phone if he wants to. Because unlike most other anti-tank missiles, the Javelin operates on a fire and forget principle and requires no further targeting after firing. The crew can take cover because they don't have to stay in place to guide the missile in flight. Like semi-automatic command to line of sight systems like the TOW, where guidance is provided by wire, and AT-14 Cornet, where guidance is provided by laser beam. After launching, the Javelin missile flies horizontally for a second, and then its engine turns on and it rises upwards to an altitude of 150 meters. This is what the military calls a curved ball trajectory. It is an impressive sight. 
The infrared homing head of the missile stabilizes the flight by means of gyroscopes and corrects the trajectory by means of the control system engines. This allows the missile to fall almost vertically on the target it has captured. A missile launched in this way strikes the upper armor of a fighting vehicle, which is usually much thinner than the frontal or even the side armor protection. The 127mm javelin warhead is capable of penetrating armor equal to the equivalent of 6-800mm of rolled homogeneous steel armor. This is not much, since modern tanks have combined armor, which is extremely effective against this type of combat unit. But it doesn't make much difference. The Javelin missile will still penetrate the top armor of any vehicle, at least if other defense systems are not taken into account. Quite often, the top armor of tanks is reinforced by a system of dynamic protection. This is a layer of metal containers in the form of bricks, which are filled with explosives. They are designed to detonate the warhead of a missile before the ship charge jet penetrates the tank. However, the Javelin missile uses a tandem warhead, which penetrates the dynamic defense system with a leading charge located at the front. It destroys metal containers with explosives and clears the space where the main charge penetrates the tank armor. The Javelin can also be fired in direct hit mode against targets that are too close so they cannot be attacked from above, or if the targets have strong overhead protection, dugouts, cave entrances and other structures. Shooting in direct hit mode is also very effective against low-flying helicopters. The main disadvantage of the Javelins is the short range which is 2.5 km. It is sufficient in most battlefield situations, but older missiles such as TOW or Cornet have a range of 5 km or more. Russia understands the capabilities of the Javelin anti-tank missile system. So in Russian latest tank models, appropriate countermeasures are used. The new Malahit dynamic protection system has two layers of dynamic protection plates that are activated by radar and designed to destroy tandem warheads. The Stora active protection complexes can use multispectral smoke and metal curtains that conceal the tank from infrared heads of homing missiles and grenades with infrared traps, so that they are directed to other heat sources. However, the latest infrared detection devices have better characteristics and can see through defense curtains and distinguish infrared traps from the original target. And also, the active defense elements designed to destroy incoming missiles should be able to be fired vertically above the tank to counteract the javelin attacking from above. It appears that the new system on the T-14 tank is incapable of this task, as its launch tubes are placed horizontally under the turret. But taking into account the accumulating combat experience of the Russian armed forces, this shortcoming will be eliminated. The future of Javelins Since the initial development of the Javelin anti-tank missile system in 1996, it has been upgraded several times. Let's take a look at three most important upgrades. Since the Javelin anti-tank missile system is mainly used to defeat soft targets and structures, a new version of this system with a higher power ammunition was developed, which was named FGM-148F. Presumably, its new warhead is equally effective against tanks, and its cost is not higher than the one a previous version had. The army has also sponsored the development to make a lightweight command launch unit. This new launcher system is expected to be 70% smaller and about half its old weight. Among its new features there are upgraded electronics, a new laser designator, a high-resolution color camera, and higher range and resolution infrared sensors. Finally, the new Javelin, which has recently been tested, has an increased range of up to 4.5 km. This is very important because the main argument for keeping the TOW in service is that this system mounted on a vehicle has a range of nearly 5 km. It looks like the new long-range Javelin will surpass it. Mobile Javelins are being developed now. In the 1990s, the army experimented with installing these systems on Bradley IFVs, but then abandoned this project. But recently, the US Army announced that it would upgrade half of its striker armored fighting vehicles by installing javelins on them. The other half will be equipped with 30mm automatic cannons. Previously, only M1134 striker vehicles specialized to fight tanks were equipped with anti-tank TOW launchers. 
The desire to install effective anti-tank weapons on medium-sized armored vehicles is a direct reflection of Russian efforts, in which the deadly Hornet anti-tank missile system in the EPO combat module are installed on the Boomerang, Kurganets and T-15 Armata vehicles. The Javelin in this version is a more mobile weapon compared to the old TOW, as a shooter with the launcher can leave the danger zone immediately after firing. If such an upgrade is implemented, even the lighter American armored vehicles will be provided with anti-tank weapons and will be able to deliver high-precision strikes with guided missiles. It seems that the United States will build up its combat capabilities and install this system on new platforms. The absence or presence of such a system on battlefields around the world has great implications, and that is why the Javelin anti-tank missile system is getting a lot of attention. That's all for today. If you enjoyed the video, then support it with your like. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Bye everyone, see you next time!